Hello everyone, welcome to another Rick's Picks. Today I'm going to be doing my review of the G.I. Joe Retro Figure Scarlet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at her in packaging, and I'm going to take a look at the figure and her accessories, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on her. And just remember, if you do like this video, go ahead and check out my G.I. Joe playlist, and hit that share, like, and subscribe button. They're all small clicks for you, but it really helps this channel grow. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. So here she is on a card back. I like the card back art. I like how they have this nice shell here. You can see all of her weapons as long as the figure. You also have your choking hazard up here, your age restriction. Turn this slightly. Now you can get a better look at the card art. I really like that. I think it really captures the whole look of the figure. You got the G.I. Joe logo here with her name. And you got Hasbro in the lower corner. Spin around this way. All right, you got a file card, and that's what I've been liking about these retro figures, is that they actually are starting to give them the file card. Yeah, you have it in several different languages, but you still have her file card, and I really like that about this line of figures. It's always been an issue that I had with the um, classified line, so now that they're giving them file cards, I'm really liking this. All right, so you got the G.I. Joe logo, you got everybody that's part of this wave, and your legal underneath. So with all that being said, let's open her up and see what she's about. If you're going to be in the Philadelphia area from September 7th and 8th, then you got to check out RetroCon 2024 at the Philadelphia Expo Center. They have lots of great tables and vendors selling all sorts of retro action figures and collectibles. Plus, they have guests, arcade games, contests, panels, and much, much more. In honor of 40 years of Transformers, they will have a 40-year anniversary display stand that you could take pictures with. Special guests will be including Anson Williams, who played Potsy in Happy Days, Don Moss, who played Ralph from Happy Days, and also played Eric from Dungeons & Dragons, the cartoon. Actor Lee Majors will also be there, best known for playing the $6 million man and the Fall Guy. He was also in Ash vs. the Evil Dead and The Night the Reindeer Died. So not only do they have the $6 million man, but they also have Lindsay Wagner, the bionic woman. Greetings, Starfighter. Lance Guest will also be appearing, best known as starring in the movie The Last Starfighter and also appearing in both Halloween 2 and Jaws the Revenge. So here she is, out of packaging. I like the overall look to her. She definitely has that classic Scarlet look to her. So first off, we're going to give her the rotation. Here she is from this side. From the rear. From this side. And now back to the front. So now that we did the rotation, let's get an up-close personal look at this figure. So... Face sculpt I find to be alright. I like it. I think her eyes are a little too thin. I would have liked to have seen them, you know, just a little bit wider. But overall, it's not a bad head sculpt. She has some of her um standard detail, like with the original figure, she had this red piece here. She also looks to have either a frag grenade or a smoke grenade here. Now, they did give her, on this side, a quiver for her arrows, which is really nice. I forget if the original figure actually had a quiver or not. That went onto her back. So they gave her this. And that's pretty cool. Over on this arm. You got her iconic throwing stars. Uh, they're just molded on. They're not you know. They can't be removed. And in a sense I can see why they did that. Because if you had those removable. And put them back on you know. They'd probably be a bit of a bear to get on and off. Off and on. Or at least get them to stay on there. So. Her belt detail is nice. So she got a lot of nice detail. They put like some streamlines into the molding for her legs. All right. So you got all that little extra detail. Same with pockets on her boots and what have you. So, and of course, inside here, she has her little Derringer, which is really nice. I think it would have been nice if that could have came off as well. But once again, I'm sure it'd probably be hard to keep that in place just because of how it's designed. So... You know, it's still a neat little piece to have. I like that they actually added that detail. So, overall, 
She's looking good. I like the detailing to her. So now let's start getting into her points of articulation. So her head does move. All right, she has a shoulder joint, a little tight, with a swivel, bicep swivel. She has an elbow joint, and she has a wrist joint. All right, get those arms up. She does have a joint right here underneath the breast line. That allows her upper torso to move. She also has one at the belt line as well. So it gives her torso room to move. All right, let me get this one foot off of here. So she has a thigh joint with a swivel as well. She also has a knee joint. She has a swivel at the top of the boot. And she does have an ankle joint. All right, the ankle don't move very well, and I'm not going to try to force it. You know, I notice that with a lot of figures. The ankle joints are usually your weakest joint on most of these figures. Now, before I put her down, get that down like that. She does come with the G.I. Joe stand. So you have the Joe star on there, which is really nice. I think I would have liked to have seen her name on the front. I think that would have been cool, but... It works very well with her. It has two pegs, so her feet just go right into them. Put that other foot in there. There we go. So she handles the stand very well. No issues there. So overall, she's a good-looking figure. I like the detail to her. I like the points of articulation. So, so far, I'm liking this figure. So now we get into the accessories. So first off, she has a backpack. All right, let's get that up there. Take a good look at that. Now it has these two nubs on here so you can fit her rifles on there. So that's pretty cool. All right, she does have the two rifles. So she has this rifle here, which was pretty much the standard for the cartoon, for the original G.I. Joe American Hero cartoon. Uh, most of your characters had one of these, so that's pretty cool that she comes with that. Alright, she comes with this weapon here as well. I believe it would be considered an M16 or something similar to it. Alright, now her rifles also have holes in the front. So if you have like flash effects, you know, bullet effects and stuff like that, you can do that as well. The uh, clip does come out. Goes back in just like this no issues all right the gun's a little bent though the more i look at it it's a little bit wobbly you know you could probably bend it into you know back into like a more straight position but it's definitely a little bit on the wobbly side all right so next off she has a pistol all right it's a two-tone color pistol so you got like this lighter i guess it's like a grayish brown and then you have a brown on top of it and that also has a hole in the front, too, for any kind of flash effects that you want to do. She has this knife. All right, it's a two-tone knife, so you got that brownish copper look. I think I would have liked to have seen a silver blade to this, but, you know, it is what it is. Next off, she has her iconic crossbow. Okay. Now this comes in two pieces, so the front can come off. Why, I'm not exactly sure yet, but we could probably figure that out as we go along. She has a scope here on the side. Okay, she comes with four arrows. So she comes with three standards. So you got one, two, All right. And actually, this one has a smaller head on it. All right, three. And then this one kind of looks like, like a grappling arrow or something. So I'm sure that'd be something like you would probably hook, like, you know, a um, cable to it, shoot it up to a roof, and then, you know, climb up the cable kind of thing. So now that we've gone through her weapons, let's go through her body accessories. So she comes with two hands. And they're both closed fists, so you got one and two. All right. And she has two ponytails. So you have 
this one here. It's the curled ponytail. And then you have a straight ponytail. So first off, let's let's do one of the ponytails. Now, the interesting thing about the ponytails and that she doesn't have, like they can come on and off. And I find interesting is the original Scarlet figure did not have ponytail. She kind of had hair just like this. So if you're somebody who's like a stickler for the old school look, with the ponytails coming on and off, you can actually have that classic Scarlet look with the short hair without the ponytail. So if that's how you want to display her, you know, you can. Um, I, I still think that's pretty neat that the ponytails can come on and off and you can actually have that classic scarlet look. So let's start with one of the ponytails. Let's do this one. All right, so that just popped in there really nice. No issues with that. You know, you can spin it, I guess, however you want. So if you want it that way, you can have it that way as well. Let's put our backpack on. So this might be the one that you would probably want to use with the backpack because it just goes right over it with no issues. All right, uh, this other one, let's see how well this one works. So let's pop this off. All right, so let's get it in there. So that will work with the backpack as well. You know, it all, it's all a preference thing, so you can use either ponytail with that, no issues. Let's go through the hands first. Let's see how well the hands come off. All right, mm, that's pretty tight. Mm, all right, took me a minute to work it off, but it does come off. And the other hand fits in there really nice. Don't have any issues with the solid fist. In fact, we're going to pop this off so we can do all the guns. All right. So there you go. Hands interchange pretty easily. No issues. So let's get into these guns now. Let's do this rifle first. All right. Her fingers move pretty easily. So there is no chore to getting that rifle in there. You can also get the finger and the trigger as well. So that all works. I don't have any problems with that. Let's try this rifle now. All right. So, all right. So here's that one as well. Let's put this arm down. Fits in really well. Finger fits in, you know, the trigger. No issues with that there. So both rifles work very well with her. And then what it is, is, got to stay on here, is right where the trigger is. So this hole here is how the gun is going to hook on to the backpack. So that just goes right through there. All right, have no issues with that. This here. Probably spin around, do it this way, I guess. All right. That slides in there just as easily. So now you have both guns on her back without any issues. All right, so let's do the pistol next. And the knife. All right, so. All right, oops. So let's bring her up close. Pistol works really well in her hand. No issue, the same with the knife. Both sit in there pretty solid. The knife goes, whoops. All right. Knife goes right in here on her thigh. Slides in really nice. No issues with the knife. And the pistol actually does not have a home. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Usually a lot of these figures, you know, you got a holster for both the knife and the pistol. But I guess with this particular figure, they replaced what would probably be on this side, a holster for the pistol with the quiver for the arrows. So she actually does not have a spot for a pistol. Huh. That's pretty interesting to me. So like I said, usually standard, they do. So, all right. 
So, but now if you wanted to, I'm sure you could probably take one of these rifles off. And maybe, no, nah, the pistol, the pistol hole, um, trigger hole is too small. So you cannot put the pistol on there. All right, so this can only be used for the rifles. Now, let's take a look at her crossbow. One concern with this crossbow, as I look at it, if you look right here, you got this really, real thin piece of plastic here for your um, butt of the crossbow. So I'd be a little careful about that. So I'm sure if, probably if you wiggle it too much, you might run the risk of breaking that off. So let's see how well the crossbow fits in our hand. All right. So. All right, there we go. Crossbow fits really well in her hand. Don't have any issues with that. Now, what it is, is if you look on the top of this, there's a track here. And your arrows fit in those tracks. So let's try this one first. This one actually looks like the one that would probably fit the best. Alright. So, if you look here, you can see... Well, let's pull this out of her hand real quick. So, if you look at it here, let's put it this way so the arrow don't fall out. Right, whoops. As I said that, it falls out. So there's a little clamp here, right here, that holds the arrow in place. And it just pops right in there. I have to move forward just a bit, yeah. So the arrows fit very nicely in there. At least that one does. All right, let's try this one now. Yeah, fits in there nice. So I'm going to say if two of them, oh, you know what, we'll try all four of them. That one fits in there just as well. And last but not least, let's say this one as well. Yeah, so all the arrows fit in there really nicely. No issues with the arrows fitting in there. Now, unfortunately, there's nowhere for her to actually put the crossbow. Like the crossbow don't have a spot either. Maybe that might fit on her back. Let's let's try the crossbow on her back here. All right, maybe that's why his head sits the way it does. No. So the crossbow won't fit on here either because the trigger is just too small. So unfortunately, only the rifles will fit there. So now let's see how well these arrows slide in. All right, so you got this one. All right, that went in pretty well. That one does as well. Now for this one. Now here comes the tricky one. This one, I honestly do not know. The only way I could think to put this one in is backwards. All right. So you can get the four arrows in there. This one's sitting kind of loose. So you can probably maneuver them how you need to. So all the arrows fit very well in the quiver. Unfortunately, the crossbow does not have a home on this backpack. Like you would think if they would give everything a home, at least a crossbow would have a spot. Now there's one other thing you might be able to do. The crossbow. Let me see this real quick. Dude. You could probably hook this on like this. Alright. So if you really want the crossbow on there, you can hook it on to the foot knock. Uh, what this thing, this part here of the crossbow is usually for is when you're putting your arrows on, you put your toe through this hook and then you pull back your um, bow and it makes it easier for you to pull a high tension bow in this case a crossbow so you know that that's what this is for so you could use that just to hold it on here you could tell it's not really meant for that but if you really want the crossbow on her you can do it that way
So overall, I think she's a really good looking figure. I like the general look to her. She captures that classic Scarlet look with some new add-ons like the backpack is new. The two rifles are new. If I remember right, the original Scarlet, I think only came with the crossbow and maybe an arrow. I haven't looked at her in like ages, the original figure. But I think that's what she came with. She may have came with a backpack as well. I, I, I forget. But overall, this fair figure comes with a lot of good stuff. Um, her joints are really nice. They move very well. Didn't have to use any heat on them. And also, they weren't so loose to where they just dangle. So that's really nice as well. Um, all her accessories fit well in her hands. No problems. It's easy to interchange the hands and um, the hair as well. Uh, my only disappointments with this figure is the factor that I wish there was a holster for the pistol. And I wish there was a spot somewhere that you could put the crossbow on. So those are my only two real gripes with this figure. Other than that, I think she's a really good looking figure. And I think she will look great with you, um, the rest of your G.I. Joe classics and retro figures. So with that being said, I hope you all did like this review. If you did... Go ahead and check out my G.I. Joe playlist and hit that like, share, and subscribe. They're all small clicks for you, but it really helps this channel grow. So, until the next one, late.